Hey everybody, it's your boy Seth and Paul. We're here on the Everything Money channel. Thank you for joining us. Um, all the people who've been following us all over the world, uh, we, we're incredibly grateful. Uh, as Paul cracks a beer, we're gonna get <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna get into Signet Jewelers. This is a company based out of our own Akron, Ohio, right here where we're sitting. Well, technically, we're in it's Ridgefield, literally um, miles away, ten minutes away, not even. Yeah. Um, Paul and I are enormous fans of Akron. Um, and uh, we're happy to have this company. We're going to look at the uh, financial health of this company. We're going to use our eight pillars to analyze the health, of, you know, not just the stock price, but the health of a company. Look at its PE, its revenue, its income, number of shares it has, its assets, over liabilities, and free cash flow. All of this is going to go in to analyzing uh, Signet Jewelers and see um, really uh, if, if this is a buy or a void for you, Paul. How are you, my friend? I'm wonderful. What do you think about Signet Jewelers? So I owned Signet last year. Come on. I think I bought it around 11 and sold it around 20. Okay, it's at 38 today. Yeah, of course. Um, I, it got over 40 at one point earlier this, um, this month. Uh, listen, they own Jared's. They own K. They own Zales. I did not know all this. Yeah, so they have major brands where every kiss begins with K, and he, he went to Jared's and all this stuff. They do a good job of having that brand there. Yes. Right? So there's, plus that's why, it, why I was attracted to it in the first place. They have good brands within their umbrella. Shall we look at the eight pillars? Let's do it. What is the market cap for Signet Jewelers, baby? So right now it is about $2 billion right wow. here. Okay. So remember guys, billion. we're doing market cap and not stock price because stock price is just a reflection of the market cap and how many shares it has and how many shares are fluctuating all the time. I care about market cap. That's what you'd pay for the company to buy all of its shares today. Pillar number one is PE ratio. We want this better than, uh-oh. It's a negative. They've lost money. I mean, they, they're, this pandemic shut them down. Their revenues are down 15 16%, I think, during the pandemic. There's not going to be any PE right now. Last quarter, they made 0.72% um, in margin, obviously losing money. They have a negative there. We want our profit margin likely above 10%. Yes, correct. But in this case, it's no, no bueno. And they used to have a dividend which would be about 4% today. It is now zero. They got rid of the dividend to preserve cash during the pandemic. I see. Pillar yep. number three is revenue growth over the past five years, Paul. Let's see how the revenue is looking. Okay, so the revenue growth is poopy. Uh-oh. Yeah, 6.55 down to 6.14. <clears throat> now keep in mind, this is through January 2020. This okay. is before the pandemic. Oh boy, you want to look at the trailing 12? I, I do want to look at the trailing 12 months to show how it's done through the pandemic. So they went from 6.14 down to... 5.2, okay? Now, they are on the upswing because the previous 12, trillion 12 months was 5.08, but they are still 5.2 versus 6.14 or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's expected, but let's go on. It's another X. Pillar number four is profit growth over these years, Paul. Profit growth. Okay, now profit growth is poopy as well. Uh-oh. 470 down to 105. There's a big $650 million dollar uh, loss right here. I believe there was a big write-off here, though. When I looked it up, when I was looking research in the company, that was a big write-off. There was a big write-off there, but even and in the last 12 months, they've lost $82 million, so it's still an X, whatever. This is four straight Xs. Pillar number five is shares outstanding. Number of shares outstanding. We want this number going down, Paul. Praise the Lord. 79.5 down to 51.7. Should be checked. Well, that's nice. How are they buying that back? Well, we'll see how they're buying their shares back. Check. Uh, pillar number six is current assets greater than current liabilities. Current assets are three point nine five billion. Three point nine billion. Okay. Current liabilities are one point seven billion. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. So they have plenty of cash on hand to pay their current debts. I assume the free cash flow would be interesting to see. Pillar number seven. So one of the things that's going to be better about the Everything Money website when it's ready in two months, three months, is that it's not going to look at the last full year. So right now it's only showing us you know, January 2020. This one, ours will always do the last four qu quarters versus four quarters five years ago or 10 years ago, whatever you want to look at. So it's a much more accurate comparison of year to year. So here, we're going to look at the free cash flow. What is free cash flow stuff? I haven't asked you that in a while. Well, I'll, I'll let you know, but for our viewers out there, if you're wondering, we are developing an app and have been for months. Paul is paying tens of thousands of dollars a year a year to get this app in order we will be delivering you a wide chart style app that will help you follow these eight pillars and you'll be able to get all of this if you join our patreon we'll talk about that in a minute but free cash flow which is very important to you paul in analyzing a company is cash from operations minus capital expenditures and what can they do with this free cash flow paul i pay dividends buy back shares make major acquisitions Free cash flow is a, a, a less manipulated 
metric of a company's profitability. When you have the profit and loss statement and you have net income, that includes a bunch of depreciation, amortization, non-cash expenses, and other tax items that the IRS and the SEC requires them to do. The free cash flow is harder to manipulate. It's cash in, cash out. We want to see that growing and under 20 times, uh, just like the PE, we want, to be, we want the company to be selling for less than 20 times free cash flow. Is that a set number? It is not. The faster the growing company, the higher the multiple, the slower the growing company, the lower the multiple. I can only tell you right now that this will be a lower multiple one because of the fact their, their revenues are down and they were down before the pandemic. So that's always a concern. But um, we're going back five years, 217 million. And the last full year, ending last January, was 419 yeah. million. So check mark there. Mm-hmm. Keep going. The average, 400. Wow. That's a big year. I'm going to delete that. I'm not even going to factor that in. I mean, that was a, yeah, I'm not going to factor that in. That was like 1.7 billion. But let's do 564. So just divide by four. Mm-hmm. The average free cash flow over the past four years, minus this big uh, what have you, is 400, Paul. 400. 400 million. 400 million. The company is currently selling for 2 billion. 2 billion. Hold on a minute now. We're getting close here. So it's five. Check mark. Now, some of you might think, oh, I got to buy this company. It's only selling for five times free cash flow. I would think so, yes. I bought it at $500 million when it was selling for one times free cash flow. The eight pillars you have to remember when we provide it to you in the app, it doesn't mean if it has certain metrics, you just automatically buy. It's a 500 foot view of saying, what do I look at next? This to me tells me, I've got to look further. Why are they selling so cheap relative to, let's go look at the last, the trailing 12 months. Let's see how the last 12 months have done, Uncle Seth. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, you know, this stock Signet, I'm sorry, this company Signet has, our, our first four are all X's, then now three straight checks, but then I look, Oh my gosh, And their stock has, has tripled in the past. Free cash flow in the last year, a billion dollars. Wait a minute now, not $400 million. That was this last full year. The trailing 12 months is a billion dollars in free cash flow. What does that mean? Some, look at this. Operating income, uh, cash from operations, I mean, 500, 555, 442, 465, a billion. Whenever you see these big jumps, you have to ask the question of why did this happen? Right. You have to understand what was that? Is that a consistent big jump or a because they changed working capital, something like that changed their inventory? You don't want it to be. You want it to be very consistent. I would immediately eliminate the billion dollars as something to consider. I'm not even going to look at it. Just like in the past five years, there was that billion seven. I don't care. I want to look for how is the company doing naturally over time. With this company, you have to be able to understand those things. Now, what we're going to do next is. Part of our plan is, so they got a check mark on there. So how many checks do we have? Well, so it's, it's four straight checks, uh, four straight X's to begin, and then four straight checks. So pillar number eight is we are indeed under our price to free cash flow. We're under a 20 times multiple, which we're at, at what, five? So Yeah. So what I would do is this. This is definitely one to do more investigating on. This is not one you're going to sit there and say, I'm out. They're decreasing shares. You have to wonder, when are they going to get back to stability? They have major brands. I will say this, the one thing I don't like about them is about eight or nine years ago, they lost Rolex. Mm -hmm. That's a big money generator for a lot of jewelry companies. So the fact that, that, that the company lost their Rolex brand, that's a concern. That's one, of the, that's the one of the top luxury brands out there, if not the top for average. If you, if you ask everybody, 100 people, name me a luxury brand, they're yes. gonna, the vast majority are gonna say Rolex, right? Yes. And the great thing is, what's awesome, I'm a watch guy. My do you first, have one on your wrist right now? I do no. not, I have a Panerai. I, I knew that, okay, keep going. I. I love watches. When watch people get into watches, they start with Rolex. Then after a while, they go, uh, you know, I'm not going to do Rolex because that's so cliche and obvious. I'm going to find these other brands. Then you know what ends up happening? You realize how awesome Rolex really is, and you go right back to Rolex being your favorite, pretty much. Mm -hmm. That's the amazing part about, that concerns me that they lost Rolex. Now, maybe they're changing also how, who they're appealing to. There are a lot of things we have to consider with a company like this. They are restructuring. They are closing stores down. These are the things you have to go in there and understand by doing more research, which you can do with our Patreon, okay? Yes. One of the things we're gonna do is, this video is gonna end right now, but we're gonna have another video that's only for our patrons. It's gonna go a little more in depth. Our patrons are almost 600 patrons right now in a chat, in several chats discussing stocks like this initiating the conversation. You have to go understand what is going on inside this company to determine if you're buying it for fundamental reasons. 
This is a $2 billion company right now, right? Where did it get to back in the day? Let's see where the max is. It was at $150 a share, which is made the market cap about, what is that, three times more, about seven, eight billion dollars. So this company has, a, has shown it can grow that high. Yes. But the question becomes, can it justify it? If you knew this, com- this company was gonna generate its normal $400 million a, a year from here on out, buy the company, done. But you have to understand in this new economy, the, there are gonna be, there's gonna be more data that I'm gonna provide here in the next few minutes. If you join our Patreon, you get access to our website when it's done for free for free. And there are very few spots remaining for our lowest level, which is $8. It gives you the app for free. If you want more in-depth analysis, you go to the $25 and $100 level. You are crazy for not signing up. This data on white charts is $500 per month. I'll be providing you all the financials and the eight pillar analysis, which white charts does not have, all for $8 a month if you sign up. And you get more videos and talking to other like-minded investors. If you feel alone out there and you have nobody to talk to about your investments, that was me and a lot of my friends. Uh, this is definitely a different look than other YouTube channels in terms of um, flashy, overhyped stocks. We're looking at uh, a disciplined, long-term investment. And if that resonates, you can join our Patreon and catch the rest of this video right now. But for now, we say goodbye to YouTube and we say hello to our patrons. See you guys.